Well, folks, Metal Ninja here, and we're going to sit through some oddities from the Sonic the Hedgehog catalog. First up is Sonic Crackers. Now, believe it or not, this is actually a very early prototype for what would become Knuckles Chaotix on the 32X. It actually kind of showcases some of the ideas they had going for what was then going to be the next Sonic game, which, according to the ROM header, was going to be called Sonic Stadium, which would have been interesting. Obviously, first and foremost, you can actually grab Tails and pick him up, in addition to the fact you are still connected by this kind of ring line, well, thing. Obviously, it would be Knuckles Chaotix. Now, of course, you could actually use this to screw around with all sorts of fun physics, including pausing and, well, ascending through walls. That's because pause mode in this game basically is uh, debug mode. So if you get stuck, you can just move all around. In the end, the whole the whole physics play thing is actually kind of fun, because you can cause yourself and Tails just to go rocketing off in all different directions. So the fact you can actually throw Tails up and help you pull you up, though it doesn't always work that way. Come on. Why you stupid fox? I never let. Oh, okay, there we go. Yeah, so it's just kind of fun. The music actually isn't bad. I guess we'll just go up here a bit. Don't want to land on no spikes. There we go. Uh, it's kind of weird how we're playing like not even, <laughs> not even an alpha of a game. This is again a very early prototype, but it's still kind kind of fun. Ooh, ooh. Sometimes I don't even know what the hell's going on. Okay, let's just uh, boost up to the top, I guess. And apparently doing that causes us to die. Is the sky made of water? Because I know Sonic's weak to water. I don't know, no, a bunch of programming gobbly... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now we've suddenly changed games to Sonic 3D Blast, or Sonic 3D Flicky's Island for those in Europe. And, okay, I think this is some kind of overworld. It's supposed to link the worlds together. Nothing up there. Okay, uh... It's very psychedelic, and there's water here that I can apparently walk over, since apparently Sonic is now Jesus. I think this is supposed to be grass, but it's just green instead of, well, being pink and yellow. Oh, and Tails can climb waterfalls, and so can I. Oh, wait, I can apparently fly as well. Yeah, this game is kind of completely broken, even though, like I said, it's not even really a game. So, I guess I'm stuck here. Oh, joy! Well, I guess that's about all they wrote for Sonic Crackers, ladies and gentlemen. See you next time. And now I want to talk about another little oddity. This one's called Sonic Eraser. It's actually a puzzle game that was originally put on the Sega Telenet, which is actually an online gaming service for the Mega Drive that was released in Japan only. Now, it's somewhat similar to the BS Satellite View system put up for the Super Nintendo, also in Japan. Basically, you could download little games and play them on your system, as well as certain games that were equipped for online play. Now, this one is pretty much a very simple puzzle game starring Sonic, as you can see here, Sonic vs. Sonic. Pretty much pieces drop down, you rotate them, line up two to cause pieces to disappear. Now I am absolutely no good at puzzle games, so I'm going to try to play. Though I do know that it is kind of similar to Columns, but it's not. I gotta say, I'm not no fan of that music, it's very kind of grating. But still, if you're a puzzle fan, this is, again, very simple and probably good. Your pieces are affected by gravity, though there's actually a mode in here which causes the pieces to not be affected by gravity. Okay, good, we're not doing too- ooh, nice chain. Just gotta try to get some big chains going here, or we'll kick the computer's butt. Yes, yes, and he punched me. Which is great, because getting punched means that your next few pieces are gonna be all wacky, you won't be able to control them. So yeah, there. About one more, I think, yep. Yeah. Crazy. So yeah, it's, again, very simple, not a whole lot to it. Just try to beat the computer. This is, of course, the lowest level, because, once again, I suck at puzzle games. And, yeah, looks like I'm not doing too bad compared to him, because he's just stacking up and stacking up, and then I think he's about to lose. Oh, no, he actually got a good combo there, but... Alright, no, I'm not doing too bad. And, yeah, looks like I won. <laughs> Ooh. And, folks, that's actually about it. From here, you actually have to reset the console, since there's no way to go back to the beginning. Yes, yeah, Sonic Eraser, because that makes sense, because you're erasing pieces, I guess. And it was this interesting little game, along with a few other interesting games that were actually on this service. Some games that actually wouldn't see the light of day forever, such as Flicky, and other ones which would never be seen again, such as, I think, a baseball game, as well as some Mahjong games. I'm going to see if I can hunt those down one of these days, but in the end, Sonic Eraser, it's a quirky little puzzle game, and it's not bad. And last up, folks, you know what happens when you stick Sonic and Knuckles onto Sonic the Hedgehog 1? Well, you get this spree that you get with every other Mega Drive game. 
That was if you press A, B, and C together? Yep, you get to play the Blue Spheres Special Stages games. Now, this is a bit different in that you actually get every single possible iteration and layout. How many is that, folks? 137 million! You play this stage 137 million times. Of course, obviously, the layout is different every time as it's unique. But yeah, I'm not going to sit here and play for that long. I'm just going to do one stage here, but... It's just mind-boggling. It's all because of the in the, the very interesting lock-on technology they used for Sonic & Knuckles, which I actually still love to this day. It's one of my favorite uh, Mega Drive games, actually. Now, obviously, if you lock Sonic & Knuckles on Sonic 2 or Sonic 3, you get to play as Knuckles in those games, which is awesome. Now, you'd think if you logged in in Sonic 1, it would work, right? Well, apparently it doesn't, because Knuckles' palette would royally screw up with the game. So instead, they unlock the ability to play as well all the Blue Stages sphere games in all time, really. Which is interesting, because if you lock on any other Genesis or Mega Drive game, you'll actually get one specific stage if you press A, B, and C together. But no others, unless you fool around with some of the coding. So that's right, folks. You get a unique stage per Mega Drive game, but only plugging in Sonic 1 is the only way to play them all. And if you can complete all of them, then my good sir, you are the king of the nerds. Because you absolutely have no life to complete 137 million stages. Obviously, you're running around on a huge Taurus, which is, you know, great, because especially when you have those last few to get here. It can be annoying, cause especially because you now you need to hunt for them. Running around on a giant Taurus, and yes, folks, this is a Taurus, since it's, well, pretty well donut-shaped, if you think about it. Though well, it looks more like a sphere, but that's kind of plays into the whole sphere thing, I guess. And now I'm annoyed, because I'm need to hunt down these last eight goddamn blue spares. Okay. Got to keep hunting, I guess. It's not like Sonic is any better at this. And unfortunately, folks, you can only play as Sonic or Knuckles. You can't play as Tails, either alone or with him following Sonic, like what happens in Sonic 3. You just Sonic or Knuckles. And I think I'm on the right track. I, yeah, okay, here we go. And here we... Son of a bitch! 